Hi, everybody. Uh, how's it going? I'm just typing in some information. I got some, a new pricing plan for the Evergreen Implementation Retreat. Check out the details here. Good. So we've got about 10 minutes or so till we start. So if you guys wanna get a drink of water, Get your notepad ready. You'll definitely want to take notes. Here's Deborah in Buenos Aires. Hi, Deborah. And if you guys obviously have any questions that you want us to be sure and answer, make sure you um, type in. Uh, and Deborah or Chaz, if you guys could just type in and let me know that you're hearing me and seeing me okay and all that's working all right, that would be super great. Oh, good. Okay, great. Thanks, Deb. Hello, people hopping on. How are you? Nice to see you. We've got about uh, nine minutes till we start. I just wanted to log on early just in case there were any technical difficulties, but it looks like everything's going beautifully. Um, making a little sign and making a little visual aid. I love the sound of doodling. Yep, I'm all about the doodling. You know I love the doodling. So uh, for sure, get yourself something to drink, get yourself a pad of paper to take notes with. Um, if you have any questions you wanna make sure Scott and I answer today, make, uh, go ahead and type them into the chat. Um, but otherwise, we'll get started in about eight minutes. Um, and if for some reason you're, this edit, thing does get edited and you wanna fast forward to when we start, just look for when I clap. So I'll clap and then that'll be the beginning of the actual beginning. Or you can sit and listen to us, you know, banter. Uh, good, and we've got people from all over the world here. Hi, Jeff, how are you? Oh, we've got Jeff Afer and Jeff. Hi, guys. Um, hey, 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 nice. Um, Okay. Trying to make sure my phone is off so it doesn't ring. Um, I'm all, uh, I mean, as you guys know, I usually have mm, two, three, four kind of big projects going all at the same time. And tonight, not only do I have this, one of the biggest and most important trainings I think we've ever done, but also uh, at about 
6.10 Pacific time, so about an hour and 10 minutes after we start, I have to go running out the door into the waiting car to go to a book signing event in Santa Barbara at Chaucer's Bookstore, which is like this legendary bookstore in Santa Barbara. Um, so I'm like mentally like here with you and about to go um, do a whole nother show. So uh, there you go. If you're interested, the book is Start Right Where You Are and uh, it's available wherever fine books are sold, including if you're in the uh, you know Santa Barbara area, come see me tonight at Chaucer's. Hi, Scott. What's going on? No, oh, we can't hear you yet. Oh, wait, did I turn on my sound? Oh, the I'm on. Oh, you're muted, honey. There we go. Hi. There you go. How was the, uh, getting my mic set up though. How was the sure. um, book signing? How'd it go? It's after this. Oh, man, making it. No, so I gotta it. like run at like at 6.10, I'm gonna be like, and that's all the time we have questions for. Gotta go. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> but actually, Leonora will be here. So if you and Leonora, if there are more questions after 610, you and Leonora can take it and I'll just, you know, be crest out. <laughs> you guys can keep going. <laughs> but I've got my nice blouse over there waiting for me to like slide onto my Superman routine. There. There we go. Oh. Um, Wait. We lost you. Crap. There you are. Just in time for the swearing. <laughs> <laughs> no, I get this fancy mic, but it occasionally doesn't like my computer. So what are you going to do? No, it sounds good. Very radio. Very. Yeah. I got this from Ralph uh, Burns at Dominate Web Media. He busted it out. And I was like, oh, you sound so good on the calls. He's like, this is the key. That's the secret. <laughs> good to know. Good to know. Um, yeah, I got, I have a, a mic that I love. I love my, my Yeti, my blue, but um, because I got my very sexy new MacBook Air, it only has one output, right? So I can't plug a USB into it. So either I'm letting the computer run on battery and have the microphone plugged in, or I do it with a computer's microphone. Yeah, it's a little bit of a gotcha. It's a gotcha. Yeah, we're just waiting for the, the technology to catch up any minute now, but. <laughs> but yeah, I did, I did get the USB, lots of USBs, but the but the power cord is not a USB. The power cord is a special little thing that only plugs in to the, th it's, it's Apple. You know, they're the ones who did away with the CD. They're the ones who did away with the, um, you know, they want us to use AirDrop, they, you know. Yeah, the headphone jack, that's burned me a few times. Yeah, there's no headphone jack on my thing now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, it's a little, but it's okay. We're evolving. It's emerging technology. It's all good. Uh, Good. So we've got about four minutes till we start. Uh, I mentioned, and I'll say again, we we just started. We put in a new ten pay plan. If you are thinking about it, joining us next week in uh, Sheraton Carlsbad, we still have a few seats available. I'll be talking about it a little bit later on this call. But if you're even remotely considering it, just do it. Um, five ninety nine. Five ninety nine. A ten pay five ninety nine. That's crazy pants. Three days with me, Scott, Justin, and Mary Kay, and then six months, maybe a year, depending on how things roll out, of monthly calls to keep you on track and, you know, let you come to us and go, I did this and it didn't work, or I did this and it totally worked. Yeah, that's, that's the, we almost, I mean, we're, none of us are hypey, but that's a big thing. I mean, people pay us a thousand to five grand a month for the coaching aspect, which they're getting thrown in on this. <laughs> I should, you know, I just should have made a bigger deal of it. I guess I'm telling them now. <laughs> <coughs> Sorry, I gotta, my kids and me all had the cough, so. Uh, I was in bed I'm, uh, I'm going to do my best not to hack through it yeah, much, but I've, that just happened. Sorry. <laughs> That's okay. It's all right. We understand. Uh, good. So we've got about two minutes till we start. We've got a bunch of participants. Great to see. Um, let me. You can make me presenter if you haven't already. I don't know if you have. Uh, that's a good idea. Uh, There we go. Now you're the co-host. Now you got All the power. Right. Love it. <laughs> <laughs> Love the power. Yeah, for sure. Um, good. We got a bunch of people hopping on. Great to see everyone. How's it all going? Good to see you. 
Um, if you have questions that you've been saving up, be sure you type them in. We'll try and get to them today, tonight, but I know Scott's got a lot of content that he's going to want to get to. Um, yeah, I'd be happy to answer them as we go as well. So we'll tell Lenore as well okay. when she gets on. If you have a question, I hate having to wait 10 slides to get my answer because then you can't like mentally focus, you know? Right, right, right. right <laughs> I'm right. fine. I've, no, I've been talking about this stuff for years, so I can get interrupted on a moment's notice. No problem. It's nice when you're so confident in your material, you get that like, ah, I could do this hungover with a head wound. What do you need to know? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, or with a massive cold. <laughs> or it just takes massive. reps. It takes reps, you know, okay. I mean, every day. Right, it's kind of a sneak preview of some of the stuff we'll be talking about at Traffic and Conversion Summit. I got a, I got a speaking slot. I'm oh, sorry. Scott Grishy speaking at Traffic and Conversion. Yeah. Woo! It was, it was competitive to get in there. I didn't know if I was going to... Uh, and uh, I just got the nod the other day. I was pretty pumped. Uh, you know what this means? What? You're kind of a big deal. <laughs> <laughs> I, I never get tired of hearing that. <laughs> <laughs> yep. yep. Yeah, it was a good point. Cause it was like a year ago when we decided to sponsor it. And it was like a big deal for us to pull that off. And then this year, it was like, of course, we're doing a booth. And then, oh, look, I'm speaking. So it was a nice, right. oh, that's great. A nice year's journey. Well, nobody's doing what you're doing. I mean, they need you. They need you more than you need them. They need you. So I got straight up at five o'clock. So I'm going to start, it. give the big sign that we're starting. Hi, everybody. We're starting. Hi, my name is Sam Bennett from the organized artist company.com. And welcome to this, our third and the final of three trainings that we're doing in preparation for our evergreen implementation retreat next week. Um, I'm going to be talking. We still have a few chairs available for that retreat. So if you're interested, the link is up in the chat um, or you've gotten the link in your email. And we just introduced a 10 pay plan of $5.99 a month. So we made it a real no brainer to get in on this. And like I said, we'll talk more about it in a second. I want to start with our breathing. And somebody said last time on the chat, like, I hate this breathing thing. It's fine. It's 20 seconds. Just ignore it if you don't want to do it. But it helps me center in. So we're just going to inhale for four, hold for seven, exhale for eight. And if you want to ignore it, that's totally fine with me. Otherwise, let your belly go really poochy soft. And you ready? Let's inhale. Two, three, four. Hold. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Exhale, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Thank you. Thank you for doing that with me. If you haven't already closed all your other windows and browsers, you wanna do that, all your other programs, anything that automatically syncs, like your Dropbox or anything, shut all that down, because these webinars are beautiful, but they take up a lot of space, and you're gonna to wanna to concentrate on this. Um, we make these uh, recordings available to you with these slides um, at evergreenretreat.co. So those will, you can get those after we're done. But right now, I think all that's left for me to do is introduce the one, the only, the extremely handsome, Scott DeGrossier. Hey everyone, glad you're here. <laughs> <laughs> um, my audio is coming in okay from here? Yeah, you sound good. Awesome. Okay, well, I'm super jazzed and I got a fair amount to show everyone. And, you know, I'm excited you've come this far to even be on the call because, you know, a lot of the customers, our original early adopters are all people with evergreen summits that are making a lot of money. And what helps them make a lot of money is, well, they've already got their funnel built and their products ready to sell and they can just focus on the marketing, which takes a lot of time to do right. And so how, what I'm going to show you tonight is some concepts not a lot of people are talking about as it relates to evergreen summits which, uh, well, evergreen products and funnels, which show you how to really uh, leverage, uh, leverage that evergreen funnel to you know, make a fair amount more money without having to do any more real work, which is you know, kind of why we're all in these lifestyle businesses. So kind of show you how the dream can be achieved. You get a great product, then you get to market it to the right people and you get to know if it works or if it doesn't work because a lot of these things are, the 80-20 rule really does, or even, it's kind of like 95-5. There's a few juicy pockets out there that absolutely love what you're doing and are willing to pay a lot of money because you give them what they need. And that's what data helps you find in an easy way. So that's what I'd like to show. So I'm going to share my screen. I'm going to move that out of the way. And I'm going to pop up to here. And get rolling. So we got about 15 slides. They're all pretty quick. They're more just to illustrate concepts. So you're not just hearing me blab. You can actually see a visual that kind of helps you explain it. <laughs> and then we're going to get into uh, kind of what Wicker Reports is going to give you for the uh, your 
what we're going to, at the end of the day, when you leave that evergreen funnel, when you have it built, and then when we're coaching you each month, um, kind of some of the insights you're going to be able to get. I just want to give you a taste of it. Be much more in depth at the event and going on forward. And you're going to have my team of experts, which for those of you that weren't on earlier, I mean, we get a fair amount for this type of coaching that we're throwing in as part of the event because we believe in it so much. Um, let me, however, end the show and start at the beginning. That would be wise. I'm better with data than I'm at PowerPoint, fortunately. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So um, you're doing marketing or you're going to be for your beautiful evergreen funnel you're going to have. And, you know, you're going to start using, hey, I'm running Facebook ads. I'm running AdWords. I'm doing Infusionsoft or Entreport or whatever. And you want to know, hey, um, how is my marketing working? As a business that's not a household name, you can't just run an ad immediately and say, hey, come buy my stuff. Um, unless you run a commodity and you're running something the cheapest price, which I doubt anyone on this is actually doing. And if you are, then this still will help you. <laughs> but most people are, you know, you've got to get yourself known. And if you're using Facebook uh, reporting or AdWords or anything, they're going to show you the results of your advertising with something called last click, which is, hey, we see that someone hit one of your goal pages. Um, what was the last click that happened? And that's what gets the credit. And on its surface, it seems helpful, but it's not because what happens is there's a customer journey that takes place and people haven't actually, they've heard about you in the past or they've got on your email list to hear about you. Like you guys are on this, this particular webinar. Well, you didn't just hear about it today from an ad and clicked. It could have been a long time ago. And so once you start finding where these customers are coming from, you're going to say, Hey, where did my best customers come from? And they didn't come from the very last thing they clicked on. And so that's, that's the idea here, that we're, we fix this problem. We allow you to manage your marketing based on ROI, which is how much did I spend and how much did I make? And obviously you want to make more than you spent, but more importantly, you want to do it at the highest positive ROI so that you can continue to serve more and more people because you have more revenue coming in. And then the essence is what we try to do. So it's a little about me. I'm not going to get too into it other than say I did a couple cool, uh, I got a patent pending in this stuff. So I do know what I'm talking about. I hope that helps you believe me. <laughs> <laughs> and um, did a couple cool projects. One I'll mention was a uh, Hong Kong 911. I, uh, this was a while ago. I consulted them on how to more quickly tell where the, where the cop cars were in Hong Kong because it was a seven second delay and they wanted it faster. I don't know if anyone's been to Hong Kong. I have a couple times and it's bedlam there. <laughs> You know, that was kind of a cool project. I just saw that. It made me think of that. Um, so here's the problems and why Wicker Ports exists and the things we're going to be able to solve for you. So I'm going to have one slide for each problem and then one slide of how we solve it. And then we're going to get into the specifics of how particularly we're going to solve it for the evergreen funnel we're building for you at this event. Excuse me one sec. <clears throat> um, so you're a small, medium business owner and you have data floating around, which there's a lot of money in your data, but you don't necessarily know um, what created the sale or um, it's not your wheelhouse. You know, it's not like you're like me who sees the world as an Excel grid. <laughs> I used to, uh, you know, I would routinely scan massive grids of data and I can pick out patterns. That's one of my natural talents. I have lots of things I'm not good at. This is one thing I'm very good at. I can't tell colors. I forget things that my lovely wife wants me to remember but I can, I know data, but our customer isn't someone that just knows that there's importance in data, but doesn't know how to act on it. So we, we know that this is a problem that we're helping you solve. You're going to know how to take action. The customer journey confusion, as I mentioned, when people start buying through this evergreen funnel and you just have sales on autopilot, it's going to be awesome. And then the next thing is, okay, where did they come from? And at that point you need to know, where did you find them? And there's all these different click points. And it's like, well, where do I focus? I'm doing everything under the sun to grow my business. Where should my valuable time be focused to grow my business? So there's that, we call that the customer journey. A lot of puzzling things around that. If you don't know how to mine that data, single channel ignorance. So if you're looking at Facebook or you're looking at AdWords or you're on webinars to your list, or you're doing social media posts on Twitter and Instagram and all those spots, Every single uh, place you post only looks at, at itself as its ultimate tool for you, which means that if someone clicks, if someone sees one of your ads in AdWords like 23 days ago and they never click on one, but they see it. And then 23 days later, they buy off that thank you page from that gorgeous funnel we're going to build you. AdWords will say, hey, look, we just converted someone. It blows my mind. I checked with Google. I triple checked the documents before I started sharing this info. 
but it's something called the view through conversion, which if you're not aware of, you're going to say, hey, look at my AdWords. It's making me all this money when it's actually not. And you got to be aware of those things. And usually people aren't. So they waste a lot of money on ads that look like they're converting and finding the customers that really aren't. And that's a big problem. Pixel based inaccuracy. Um, the one I'll mention here uh, is that the, your subscription customers are your most valuable. And those people don't hit a pixel. So you can't show their value to a reporting tool that relies on a pixel to say, hey, look, I made a sale. You can't do that. And furthermore, you don't want to be configuring a ton of pixels all the time when you're just trying to grow your business. You create a nice product, you create a nice marketing page, and you're like, oh, great, I got to go deal with all this pixel stuff. Facebook agrees this is an issue. I've met with Facebook three times personally. We're still in talks with them. They're funding a bunch of stuff around case studies of ours. So they agree. And the stuff you're going to get here is stuff that Facebook themselves is also interested in. Um, trusting data you can't verify. That's a big one. You see a number, a number of Wicker Reports customers come to us and say, hey, um, Facebook shows that I had 60 sales today, but I only had 35. Why is that? And that happens all the time. Or Facebook says I had 10, I had 20. Uh, that's that's just a common problem. Um, you need to be able to trust it because you know you have a limited amount of time and more importantly, marketing budget. You gotta know, hey, I'm spending on things based on real data, real sales, not something that a software program is telling me that I, I don't know if it's true. And the last one is longer sales cycles and subscriptions uh, that make last click, what I mentioned earlier, last click useless. So if you have a, you know, like a longer sales cycle, unless someone, you're a household brand where someone's going to see your ad and click and buy, um, the longer the sales cycle, the less important the last click is. It's still somewhat important. It show, uh, with email, it's important. It shows which email actually made them buy. That's when it's very helpful. But when you're trying to generate leads that then need to be educated before they buy your product, last click doesn't help you at all. And so that's a big problem. And the last thing is things are expensive. Here's some of the tools. I know there's a couple others in our space as well, but here's some of the bigger ones. They're expensive. They have contracts. They take a lot of time to set up. I'm throwing this in free. I'm throwing in my ACE team is going to set all your stuff up, which normally we started a grand and up for setup. We're doing it completely free for you. We're giving you the first month free. And then you just pay if you're still going to use it, which I don't know how you wouldn't when we're going to have you all set up. But the point being, I mean, normally this is expensive and time consuming. Any questions? I'm going to show you how we solve those and then we're going to get into some one or two data points and then um, we'll go over that a couple extra bonuses I'm throwing in on top of all the free service. Yeah, Scott, Julie asked um, about what a pixel is in, in the context in which you're talking about it. So a pixel has become a, a common term in tracking, which doesn't mean you would know it if you're not a big tracker. But what, uh, when people used to try to track people, they'd put an image on a um, page. And the source of the image, which it was one pixel big, was a script which would load in a tracking script to keep track of you. And so that's how people used to try to track things is they put a little image on which, which would really code, which was called a pixel because you, you'd always make the size one pixel by one pixel. That's where the pixel based tracking phrase came from. And so that, that, that relies on that code to load and track which can always happen for a variety of reasons, or it could load multiple times and double report things or Right, so like if misfire. people have images disabled, like if they're you know, at work and they're looking at stuff on, on Internet Explorer or something, that's not gonna load images, so it's not gonna load that pixel, so they're not gonna know. Yep, perfect example. I'm gonna steal that one. Yeah. Credit Sam Bennett. You bet, <laughs> And I just wanna say the long sales cycle thing. One of the courses I did last year, I went through to see, um, I was actually not sure my affiliate tracking was working properly. So I went through everybody who had enrolled in the course and I was shocked at how many people had joined my list in 2010, 2012. So I'm like, really? Four years later, you just spent $365. It was amazing how long the nurture was for them. Mm -hmm. Yep all the time. And then now how easy it is to retarget people. So people are doing that, you know, with like a sync sumo and all that Justin's going to set up. That is great. But it also means you have that many more clicks coming from these more sources that makes it even more confusing inside of Facebook to tell. It's a valuable thing to do, but it makes the journey people don't 
follow these linear funnels anymore until they get to a checkout page. They could have had it forwarded from a friend, you know, tweeted, whatever. And so we go and pluck them out automatically for you. That's what my patent is based on is that we look at the times I'm going to use Infusionsoft as an example, but we have, you know, about a dozen things we integrate with. We grab times out of there and compare them against the times of the clicks. So you don't have to go in and tell us, Hey, this is a new lead. Oh, Hey, this is a reopt-in which is important, you know, because you're going to launch this new evergreen funnel. Your existing list is probably a prime place where you're going to want to, um, you know, try and make some sales. Well, then we want to track which lead magnet, the lead magnet that you build at the funnel, if they re-opt in for that and buy, you want to know that so that you can use it for advertising. So that's called a re-opt in. So there's all these different points. We pluck out the ones that matter because they match specifically to actions you can take. And there's training in there to explain, hey, this tells you where these people came from and how to act on it. So you're not, you're not trying to do cold lead gen to a ad that just converts people that have been on your list for a year or vice versa. People based tracking. So we're going to wire into your sales system and to your email system and then click tracking, match it all up. So there's no need for doing pixels. We have one string of code you put for our click tracking, but that's, that's to get us a time of a click. And then we match it all up for you. There's no concept that you have in a telework reports what a click means. And this is, like, we go back a slide because this is so, you're, you're skipping over this like it's totally normal. <laughs> <laughs> and this, you, you guys don't, you may have noticed that Infusionsoft's reporting is terrible and Entreport's reporting is terrible and Aweber's reporting is terrible. Like you can't look at your CRM and really see what's working. And especially if you've got a couple of different sales funnels because you're like, oh, well, here's my list. Oh, but here's my PayPal. Oh, but here's my Facebook reporting. Here's my... Like you have 14 different reports, none of them are talking to each other. The fact that Scott's found some magical way to put this all under one umbrella so you can actually see what's happening and track people all the way through from that first click into sales, into subscription, into repeat sales, is the thing that no one else is doing. No one. Yeah, we, it was an invention by necessity in 2014. I did it for someone and because uh, he had spent four grand on Facebook and only made one sale. And he's like, Facebook uh -huh. sucks. And I said, well, maybe. What did you do? He said, well, I tried to you know, get him to buy my lobster and it didn't work and that's that. And I said, well, if I'm scrolling around on my phone and Facebook and I've never heard of you, I'm not going to suddenly you know, order a lobster to be delivered to my house in three days. I mean, that's ridiculous. <laughs> and so... That's how Wick Reports kind of started. It was, um, hey, how could we do this? And I kept looking around for ways to do it and there was nothing. And so necessity is the mother of invention, I guess. It was in this case anyway. And Ed is asking if you integrate via Zapier to Active Campaign or directly to Active Campaign or? Directly. Directly, directly. to Active Campaign. Yeah. We have a one, you paste in your API key, click save, and that's it. You don't do anything else. And then if you run your orders like through Stripe, you paste in your API key there. And then you put our tracking code on your page and you're done. Oh. It's, it's really, we spent a lot of time, you know, Digital Marketer was our 10th customer ever. It was obviously a, quite a, the biggest in our space. And we had this convoluted way to do it, building individual links with redirects each time, which you may have seen in other systems. And they were like, hey, we, we're not going to do this. <laughs> we got 400 ads. And I was like, oh my God, I'm going to lose Digital Marketer, my big client. And I just started my business. Oh my God. And so then we had to rehatch a way to do it, which meant, painless as possible so and now it's i mean people have you know from four ads to 400 ads and it, it doesn't matter anymore and you integrate with salesforce and part part dot i don't know what part dot is but salesforce um, we have an api we'd have to wire that one up that's a little out of the scope of what we currently integrate with but anything it's very modest amount of fields so we have people that have mm -hmm. so i could put you in touch with them but that that's not a native integration salesforce and so Wicked Smarts is another thing. So sometimes, you know, you just say, hey, I have all this data. What should I be doing? You can pick the question you're looking for because you should have an intention in anything like the breathing intention at the start to, you know, get us focused. You're looking at your data, you should have an intention. You shouldn't just be in there aimlessly looking at pie charts. So if you are, we have these things. You can pick a question and we'll give you the answer, which means that we'll sort, filter, pick the right models if we need to. You know, there's some stuff that's, easy to detect and some that isn't. And either way, you just figure out what question you're trying to ask and we'll give you the answer. So that's kind of a cool thing. 
Um, that is so sexy. Yeah, it was, it was a fun one to create. And then this is, um, yeah, I already mentioned this in the recurring. So each month when your recurring gets billed, like let's take the active campaign Stripe example. If your Stripe keeps, Stripe keeps getting, uh, you know, processes of payment, we pull that out and we look back at all those clicks to see um, and to retroactively update the ROI. And I'm going to show you a specific example. I only have like three more slides here where someone who lost money when they ran an ad actually made like over $40,000 on an ad over time, which is mm. pretty cool. And uh, really fast, that's Erin. You know Erin? Yeah, she's the best. $5 dinners. 10 minutes. And she, she almost bought for like months. That's another sale, long sales cycle. <laughs> She kept seeing me at events, was going to do it. People bring her over. And then she finally like, wow, 10 minutes. So that's not always going to be 10 minutes, but you don't have to worry about that in this event. It's zero minutes. You know, we're going to do it all. So zero minutes. Still have to give us your logins if you want to. We'll do literally everything for you though. Um, okay, the demo. And then we'll get into the perks I'm going to give down here. Uh, I threw in an extra thing here. I'm going to show you later. So here's Wicked Reports. I'm not gonna, I mean, we have a, tons of reports, some which you'll never log into because you don't care and some which you'll be all over because they'll be the lifeblood of your business. You know, we have some people, you know, like Dominate Web, Web Media, who's the, probably the biggest Facebook agency in our, in our niche. And, you know, Justin, who's right up there with them. They log into this all the time. They now run ads showing Wicked Reports, which is pretty sweet for us, you know. But, um, and so, but there's a lot of reports here, but you're going to get a lot of juice from just, you know, one or two, never mind all the other ones. So I'm just going to show you two that should get you pretty pumped. And um, I'll take any questions that you have. This is this guy's email revenue, by the way. Look at that, 3.6 million. I'm gonna get into Facebook though. I wanna show that. I wanna show you, what this. so this is the lobster guy. He knows I'm showing his data. This is a live account, not demo data. So you know, every day I get in here, it's changed one way or another. This is the guy that spent four grand, which was a big spend for him. That was like his monthly budget. Only got one sale and started Wicked Report, it's kind of started Wicked Reports. And now, look at, he made 700 grand on 100 grand because we were able to track, you know, his sales cycle was never click and buy when he first started. But we were able to, you know, figure out, hey, you know what, these leads are buying on Facebook. And furthermore, here's where they're exactly coming from. And as you can see, he made an extra $700,000, which is, you know, like probably one fifth of his revenue. So let's dig in and show you exactly what you get here though. So the campaign names are coming directly from Facebook and this also works with AdWords or this also works with any social link you're posting. Like if you just have a big Facebook following or Twitter following, whatever, it's gonna be pulled in. These are actually from Facebook, they come in automatically. The costs and the clicks come in automatically. The leads are coming from your email service provider and these are verifiable leads. Like I can go to another screen and see these 2001 people and see the exact ID inside of like an Infusionsoft so you can validate, hey, this is ID 245, it's joe at you know, web.com. Like you'll see who it is. The 259 sales come from wherever your sales system is that you integrated. Like if you use Infusionsoft or Orange Report and your sales are in there, we'll pull them out. Stripe, we pull them out. Shopify, we pull them out. And again, you'll have the order ID from the source system so you know this is a real sale. Yeah, hide this thing here. And then the ROI and the lifetime value because that's what's really important. And I'll, you know, I don't know if we'll have time, so I do want to mention this now. This guy only has 4% of his leads ever buy from Facebook. You know, all that people you're obsessing about your conversion rate and all that, just sure, that's important. 4% conversion rate all time. And it was 3% until like a year ago. He's made seven to one. So the data, the money's in the data. He, you know, it's not about, oh, hey, I need more people. I need to find more people to convert. Of course, that's great. And you do also want to get that to happen. But as long as you get the people to buy and those people are high lifetime value customers, you can make seven to one. So here's a, looking at the ROI, which is automatically calculated. So this is real revenue against real costs against real clicks. This is real ROI. And then the most important thing Okay, you have ROI, you need to know why you made it because it's not just, oh, everyone saw this ad and immediately bought. I mean, that would be fantastic if you could do that. Some people can. It's pretty rare with what we've seen. And we, you know, you go to our testimonials page, we're dealing with most of the people that you guys probably follow. And a lot of them, they got to nurture. Um, and in his case, you can see where did this money come from? Well, first clicks brought this much money, first opt ins, which is, um, cold traffic that turned into leads, which is something you're going to do like a madman. Once you have an evergreen funnel, you're going to be like, I need to tell the world about this because I finally have a thing dialed in. I can sell and you're going to want to just pour traffic on. Well, then when the dust settles a month later, Hey, where did the cold traffic 
turn into customers? Well, in this case, $31,000 in cold leads from this campaign that he spent five grand on. Reopt-in, as you can see, didn't do that well. So that's good to know because this is the type of campaign that works better when people are getting to know him. Once they've been on his list, it didn't work. And then last click, which is, did they click on this ad before they bought, which I covered earlier. In this case, he made $2,500. Not too shabby, but it is if you spent 5,500. So what this means is he lost $3,000 on the campaign, which he normally wouldn't be able to do. He just kind of saw his metrics and he had, you know, proven lead gen. I'm not saying you're going to run out and like lose three grand and then make money all the time. But in this case, he had a proven funnel that was working. He could take some risk. Well, it wasn't risk because he had the data to back it up. But then when he runs it and says, okay, hey, it's not, it doesn't seem like it's converting. I can, I can lose it. I can spend two, 3000. Now that I'm three grand out, I got to stop. Well then over time is when this money came in. And as it came in, he saw, Oh, Hey, look, I actually made almost $40,000. Um, it just took a while. And he's had that happen all over the place. You see these big lines, Facebook is great for him and many others for cold traffic that finds buyers. And he knows this because we show all the clicks. So you can go mine that in. And for him, he's getting better now at like last click. So here's a good one. So now over time, certain messages fit better for people once they're already on your list. So in this case, like a last click or a reopt-in, now he's starting to do better in this campaign. Or it looks like here. He's doing better over time at converting people. But out of the gate, you can say, hey, I just want to run this ad to cold traffic to get leads. And we can tell you if it works or not. Any questions on that? Or I want to show one or two other things here. I'm like, I'm swooning over here. I am not a numbers nerd. And I'm just like, this, and this is lobsters. Like lobsters. Some, of you, some of you on this call are, are offering, you know, things that change people's lives. Things that help people with their health, with their relationships, with their um, getting their, their creative projects done, um, growing their businesses, being better people, better citizens. I mean, if you've got something great, wouldn't it be beautiful to be able to scale it in this way and actually be able to see? Because I, can, I would totally be that guy who would be like, ugh, I spent $3,000 and it didn't work and this sucks and nothing's ever gonna work. But the fact of the matter is it did work to the tune of $30,000. Yeah. It just, yeah. but there's, you have no way of knowing that if you don't have a system like Wicked Reports. Well, if you don't have Wicked Reports because there isn't another system like it, there's only Wicked Reports. We had a, we have one thing with, uh, they had someone, uh, it was, it's, yeah, it's a testimony I can share. Some, uh, it was a music lesson. They sold music lessons. They had turned off an ad set and then, you know, we wired it in and they got up and they actually made 27,000% on an, on a one target. Wow. Some astronomical, like seven to 10 grand on like 50 bucks or whatever. It was like ludicrous. And they wouldn't even have it on because they didn't know. <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> Tim is asking, he says they're in Australia and they use a local bank for payments. Would Wicked Reports still be able to grab the payment data from there? Yeah, we got a couple options. So one thing is to use something we integrate with or integrate it into your CRM. That's, that's the preferred option, I think, because then you have the value of having your order data where you can email people. But we also have an order API and we also have a drag and drop CSV. So you can just format, it's like six or seven columns. There's a, you know, it's in, the, I mean, we have dozens of things here. So it's like order upload down here. And you can actually drag a CSV on and then we'll historically go back once, like, so let's say we've tracked clicks for January and then you upload your orders today. We'll go back and retroactively attribute those, which is kind of slick. I like that one a lot. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So yeah, that, that, the, the, only, uh, the only caution is that, that that adds a manual step you got to do. But that being said, the data usually, then all of a sudden when you're here and then it lights up with all your little lines, it's pretty intoxicating. So you're usually willing to do that because you get the data, right? So now I drilled into one campaign because once you mentioned Sam triggered something to me here. Now I want to first, now this is within a campaign. You can see who you, who you targeted. In this case, this was a lookalike of his Christmas customers from 2014. And what ad you sent them, an expiring coupon, he made 15 to one. And none of it was last click. So when he ran this ad, it showed zero dollars. He's like, okay, I just wasted a grand. That was stupid. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, and at the time, you don't feel all smug about it because you don't actually know because sometimes they don't always work out this well. But this one's like, it just keep, these people just keep making, keep buying. 
And so and then as they buy, it pops up. So then when he's in here saying, hey, I got to run, I want to get some new leads. What brings customers? Well, show an expiring coupon to these people and you find leads that become customers at a tune of 15 to one. And that's the holy grail of marketing right there in my opinion. And here, just if, if anybody missed the first training with Justin Lofton of Sync Sumo, we talked about lookalike audiences. So what you can do is take a list of your prospects or better yet of your customers, people who've actually bought from you and upload it into Facebook and say, find me more people like this. Find me a lookalike audience. And Facebook, thanks to their magical algorithms, will do it. And the one thing I thought was super interesting that Justin was saying was, and don't mess with it too much because, you know, we start to think, oh, we know our customer, like, oh yeah, it should only be women or only people over the age of 45 who live in Santa Barbara County. No, no, just let the algorithm do its thing yeah. because it'll find your people better than you can. And also you will pay less per click. Um, but I love this being, you know, so you're saying, here's people who've already bought, find me more people like this. We run them an ad. Sure enough, you know, they're, they're, they're yeah. going to buy the abandoned cart one too. That's insane. Yeah. Yeah. The lookalike. So we got on with Facebook one time and the guy, uh, his rep was like, well, you got to update this lookalike. He's like, why is that? He's like, well, it's not up to date. And I was like, hey, listen, we're not touching that golden goose. <laughs> Whatever Facebook knows about that, they've completely dialed in. We do not, we're not updating that one. It's very helpful to update your audiences a lot. But if you find one that's killing it, don't, however you have it set up, you just leave it alone. This was a cannot email, never order. He took his opt-outs and, up, and threw it up there. And he made yeah. another, I mean, he made that. Can email, never ordered. He just sorted his Infusionsoft list by uh, did not have an order. Uh, you know, he had an order tag. He said, no order tag, threw that up. Then these likes were obviously, and then this was a, yeah, reached my cart page, didn't reach my checkout page. We should probably, you know, build that in as a default. Uh, on, the, on the summit, so I've got all these learnings from dealing with all these people. We're gonna, I'm gonna work with Justin to hook you up with some of the audiences that we know out of the gate usually will work. So we'll already have sweet cold traffic coming to you and be able to track it. Cause you'll wanna test different messages, you know, he's doing expiring coupons because lobster, I mean, it's kind of a commodity. It's, you can only do so much, but with the, like you said, when you're helping the world, there's different messages that match different markets that correspond to the people that are willing to pay. And that's what you need to find. And that's what this finds. So you just name your ads according to the message. So when you're looking at your data, it makes sense. It's not some weird, Oh, content. Um, it was ad one, two, three. What the hell was that? No, you name see, he named it super clear. 52% off expired in this date. And then it's very clear what happened. Um, so yeah. So let me, let me take a minute to talk about the summit here, because part of what you're saying is, is leading to me to exactly why I created this thing to begin with. So I created the summit because I needed it. I have material that I've created courses. I've created lead magnets. I've created, which are great. People love them. They're super effective. For, but I'm only ever marketing to the people on my list, right? I have no lead gen at all. I don't know how people get on my list. They just do. And then they get emails from me. And I knew that I needed to create an evergreen system, but I didn't know. And I know in theory how to do it, but I didn't know what I didn't know. And I didn't know what to look for. And I thought I should get some of my genius friends together and then we could like do this together. So the whole point of the summit, it's next week, it's um, a retreat. It's January 31, February 1 and 2 at the Sheraton Carlsbad, beautiful hotel, right near a very good outlet mall, by the way. That's not where we're going, I'm just saying. Um, and uh, we're gonna work for 90 minutes, we're gonna lecture for 90 minutes, teach for 90 minutes, work for 90 minutes. Teach for 90 minutes, work for 90 minutes. So you're actually gonna get this done in the room, you're gonna drive out of there February 2nd with your evergreen system up and running, making you money by Thursday evening. So day yeah. one is Justin and the Facebook lead ads. We're gonna create those lookalike audiences. We're gonna get those ads. I'm there for copy and content, which happens to be my particular zone of genius, um, making sure you're really communicating authentically and, and in a meaningful, compelling way with people. Day two, we're going to have Mary Kay talking about um, what you do with them once you got them on the list. Like, how do you get them to log in? How do you make something that's sticky? How do you get to know them so you can upsell, cross-sell, downsell? And then day three, we're setting up your wicked reports. And we're all going to be in the room with you. And there's only going to be like 
not even 10 other entrepreneurs. So you will get more personal attention than you ever wanted probably. <laughs> um, and, uh, and we have a payment plan of 599. It's 10 payments of 599. So you can get in on this thing for 600 bucks, which is frankly insane. Um, so if this is speaking to you at all, and I don't know why it wouldn't be, jump in on this. I don't know if we're ever going to do this again. And if we do, it will not be this cheap. I guarantee. So whatever you have scheduled for next week, cancel it. Come to the Carlsbad. I actually, I was talking to somebody the other day who's in Florida and she's like, I don't think I can afford the plane ticket. So I just quick went to kayak. You can fly from Orlando to San Diego for our dates for $137. I was like, dude, come for lunch. Like That's crazy. So it's a That's great crazy. time of year to travel. So if you're thinking like, oh, I couldn't possibly come from Australia, or I couldn't possibly come from the East Coast, uh, I bet you can, actually. I bet you can. And look at these ROIs. I would this, love to yeah. spend, you know, <laughs> two bucks and make 1500 That sounds great to me. Yeah, this is his email tracking. So we'll know, he knows like which email made him money. So in this case, like J September 2nd, 54% off email broadcast made him $19,000 on this many clicks, this many sales. And what blows me away about some of these numbers is how, so he has 100,000 people on his email list. His click rate, look at this one. It's a half percent, but 10% of them bought. So whatever Festivus, you know, uh, December 18th, made him $15,000. Um, you know, he has ones. So he was able to be a data-driven, I like this one, Cubs win. So instead of, he can test out different ideas and different copy things and find out precisely which ones are making the money or getting the clicks or not. So if you have a great, uh, you know, if you have other email funnels going on, we can find out where the drop off is. Or if you have a great email that's supposed to close everyone and it's the seventh email in a sequence, we can find out are people even getting it? And if so, are they buying? And if not, what is it that they're buying from? So um, one other thing I want to show you real quick, and then I want to throw in my added bonus here. We have something called predictive behaviors. And so everyone's got an email autoresponder and they're sending emails out. Well, we can historically grab all your orders and convert them to the time zone of the customer and then figure out what day and time people buy the most. This is a Craig Jacobson thing, which of course means it's intelligent. He gave me the rights to do this. <laughs> he just said, cool. I said, hey, can I build that in? He goes, that would be awesome. So this is actually the lobster guy. So think about it on offline. I'm, I'm from Massachusetts. I'm from Maine. I live in Massachusetts. We go buy lobster in the evenings, right before we're going to cook it or on the weekends. Online, people are buying Mark's lobster early in the week and early in the morning. So they don't behave the same online as offline, which you know you may, or you may just choose to send your emails at you know, 8 a.m. because that's what Infusionsoft does. They had to pick a time. You know, I don't blame them. What Mark does is sends them at 10. The emails don't go out when everyone else's do, but they go out when it's proven people buy the most and then people buy more straight up. And we can even filter by day of the week. We can filter by product and you can see when people are buying things and then you know when to email about it. So I remember Craig so, had a client. Um, I think Craig's going to drop in and come see us actually while we're there. Um, oh, Wes Schaefer's going to come by too. Tyler might come by. We're going to, this is a room full of heavy hitters. You, you kind of want to come just to hang out. But um, but Craig was telling me about a, a client he had who did relationship coaching, right? Like, can this marriage be saved? And he had thought, I think like a lot of us, like I would, like, oh, well, you know, relationship coaching, that's a long sales cycle. You have to get people to trust you. You know, it's not an impulse buy. But then he started to do this time of day stuff and realized that people were buying and, they were, and it was women who were buying and they were buying at three and four in the morning. Yep. They were buying at 4 p.m. and 4 a.m. I remember this story because they were right. either having to go face the, the spouse at home and looking for how to deal with it or they couldn't sleep because they were all stressed out. Right. And it's, when it's they got cool on at 4 a.m., they were buying it within 13 minutes. Yep. That was right. awesome. So that's when you run the ads, right? So I wanted to th uh, just summarize. I'm actually throwing in something else. We just launched something. For those of you that are familiar with Digital Marketer, they have this whole training program that they offer. Well, we have the Wicked Academy. And it's, you know, $1,000 in courses that I'm throwing in as well. It's coming soon. It's, they're actually already ready, these guides. And so they're um, guides. They have, you know, progress. They have quizzes, badges, and they're very, uh, you know, if you want to learn more on top of everything you're getting, I'm throwing in a grand of courses on top of the $500 setup, the free Wicked Report. So, 
This is wow. all, this, this is all in on it. I don't know if I even mentioned the Wicked Academy. I didn't know if it was going to be ready, but it's ready. So No, I had no idea. <laughs> I'm <laughs> delighted. This is so yeah. great. Yeah, so we're doing all that on top. Uh, on top of the fact that you should just want an evergreen funnel and you know all the stuff we're offering, but I'm throwing in other grand in courses too. So it just got ready. So this whole course thing. That's great. Anyway. You also get, you get consultations with each of us, with Scott, with Mary Kay, with Justin, and with me. Um, and like I said, six months of ongoing support. So... Um, you can mm -hmm. get your questions answered and we can make sure that you get these kind of results because that's what we're here for. Yep. So that's what I had. You know, I want to try to keep it to our 45 minutes. I can answer any of the questions or if it's any reports people need to see, but I mean, that should already have their whistle wet enough to know what they're getting. Um, I guess I will show how easy it is to set up as well. You know what? We're doing it for you. So don't even worry about that. <laughs> we have all these other look cool tools that some people like, some don't need them. Just depends. We have a link builder. We get, you know, if you're doing a tripwire, a cheap, uh, you know, a, a low cost offer, we can track the value of those people over time to see if where they came from combined with what they bought leads to more value or less. Um, kinds of other cool stuff. Oh, that's fantastic. I like this one because it's a, uh, like, so here's a customer. It's made him $3,700. Someone, we shield who it is out of privacy, but we show the ID. So in Infusionsoft, you can go look at this ID and see that this is a real person with this email and they spent this much actual money. But here we're showing all the inbound clicks and when they were created and any orders. This is an order ID from your system. So it's all valid data you can see. And so there's no question that you can trust the data. And some people, you look at, she clicks like every couple minutes sometimes. I, I'm scrolling down because I did a demo for this one. What did she do? She re-opted. So she's been on the list, spent all this money, right? And you think, okay. She re-opted in on the list she'd been on and spent all this money for a while. It blows mm -hmm. my mind. People don't behave linearly. That's why you need the data just to take care of it for you. Because people, you know, click on the same email three times in 20 minutes before they buy or... It's interesting. So you can see their whole path. So with some high value customers, it's, it's valuable to learn what makes them come to the site. Well, and this is what I love. And I, you know, I'm able to do some of this just with Infusionsoft, just with, you know, automated, um, you know, decision diamonds and stuff because, and it's beautiful because you're marketing to people based on their behavior, based on when they're interested, what did they want? What's, what's right for them. And it's the mistake that almost all entrepreneurs and marketers make is you spend all your time thinking about you and talking about you but really it's about them. And when you're doing it right, and I get these emails all the time with people being like, oh my gosh, do you have a camera in my house? Like, <laughs> how did you know? I'm like, well, I know because you told me. You told me with your clicks. You told me with your logging in. You told me with your attention. You told me when you, you know, saved this to a folder or forwarded it to your mom. You told me. Here's his uh, sales velocity, which you don't have to know how this works, but I'll tell you anyway, we take the first time we see an order and subtract the first time they signed up on your lit, their create date. And that the difference is the amount of days that it took to the first sale. And this is his, we can filter it by the traffic. This is the Facebook leads. Two things that stand out are, look at all the sales that, I mean, the first sale in some cases, more than 180 days, 90 to 180, 31 to 60, so you need tracking to be able to find where these customers came from. The other thing is 4.01% mm. are the only people that bought. 95.99% of his Facebook leads have never bought. And yet still he made seven to one, as I mentioned earlier. So this is the data behind that. So it's kind of like, and this is common, you know, people either take a while to buy or they never buy. And if you're just worried about like conversion rate on the front end of immediate revenue, you're going to miss out on literally hundreds of thousands of dollars. So that's why we do these things because they're helpful, help you make more money, you know, save you, save yourself a lot of time too while you're at it. Oh, that's so fantastic, Scott. Really amazing. Um, good. Do you guys have any questions? Juan says he's a happy user of Wicked Reports. Thank you, Juan. Awesome. <laughs> good to hear. Yeah, always happy to have fans. Happy to have fans. Um, and uh, yeah, and even if you are, if you already have Sync Sumo or you already have Membarium or you already have Wicked Reports, or um, feel free to come to the retreat anyway, because we will make sure that you get the most out of it, and plus you'll get all the bonuses and um, and support and cool stuff. So here, Scott, do you want to put it back to your to our our faces? I guess yes. Yeah, stop sharing. Okay. There we go. All right. Hi. Uh, hi. I got, a, I got a runny nose here, just like a little kid. 
yeah, so that's uh, that's what I had for everyone today. Um, I mean, uh, that's I mean, never offered that much stuff at once, but I just believe in this event. I think it's I think it's going to be such a fun time too, a fun time that makes people money. So why not? Well, that's that's the other reason we're doing this. We just like <laughs> watch together. So <laughs> yeah, it's going to be a blast. You know, it's going to be a I'm blast. Excited. Good. What do you guys, what are your guys' questions? What are you wondering about? Because I know you cannot see this amount of data and not have your brain start going ping, 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 ping. Like, I know you're thinking something. So, um, I don't know, maybe, uh, Scott, for the people who, who aren't, what are, what are some things that just everybody should be tracking no matter what? Email performance is a, I mean, you all have email, you're, you need to be sending them and you need to know if they work or not. Because a lot of times, uh, like Mark's emails, the ones that get him a bunch of feedback or, you know, you're trying to just sort of bait people in with an open and those may or may not work. I mean, like you have copy dialed and you're a copywriter, you know what you're doing, but a lot of people don't. And so you need to rely on data. Mark's slowly grown his business to that 2.8 2 million in email revenue because he'd send one and he'd check and see if it did better than his average. His average email now is two grand. It used to be like $300. And it's like, hey, did I make more money? Not every email has to be about money, but the ones that did, he has to know, hey, did it make more or less than my average? If so, keep it. If not, ditch it. He sent one about his uh, running the marathon and it only had 400 clicks. And it was, I was cringing. I'm a friend of his, but I was like, well, lobster in the marathon, nothing to do with each other. He made like eight, nine grand on the email because people like the personal touch for his list. And you know, when you hear these strategies, you have your product, it's this moment in time in your market, it's how you have your relationship with your list or don't, and it's how you chose to speak in that email. And there's a lot of forces in play. And so you need to be able to test to see if it worked or not. And you need to rely on data, not um, feedback from your closest two friends who, I love that email, or I hate it, because it can affect you. And you need to then be able to rely on the numbers to know, is this moving the needle in my business or not? Yeah, I always say you should only take advice from two people. Paying customers and people who are better at what you do than you are. Yeah. Not. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> those, are, those are the only two people I'll listen to. If somebody's smarter than yeah. me, I'll listen to them. If they're better at what I do than I, than I am, I'll listen. If they're paying customers, I'll listen. Everybody else, mm-mm. Yeah. Um, Once and an, inter yeah. Once and an interesting thing. Yeah, about my ever webinar that um, if I'd have chat dis disabled. Um, so we looked at ours, we were trying to every webinar for us and we found that with a software product, live demos actually work better. So we're actually have a new website launching Friday and we have live demos because those convert better. So in, to answer your question, um, yeah, we were testing, um, just watch the webinar and buy. It did decent, but through the data we see we do need a live interaction. So to your point, um, yes, it does convert better with chat. <laughs> I don't know if that was, that was to everyone. Yeah. So uh, the other thing is um, tracking clicks as well, because if you're spending a lot of time on social media, you got to see, does anyone care enough to click over and read your stuff or does it ever generate leads? I have a post on a digital marketers blog about Mark firing three different social media managers over time. He was hiring them at a pretty expensive rate for a social media manager, 3000 a month. And he'd say, I'm going to hire you for three months. You're going to get nine grand. You got to make back more than what I pay you. And none of them could do it. And it may have been just his, whatever their approach was, didn't work. And because you buy a system from someone, you know, a strategy of marketing, and you got to be able to apply it to your own business and see if it actually works. And um, so that would be another thing I would say. Track, do people care about what I'm doing? And it's always, are they doing, is it more than the average? So you got to track to get an average. And then you got to say, hey, is this more or less than average? That's great. Oh, Elizabeth Manning's here. Hi, Elizabeth. Okay, Elizabeth, you're saying you're not quite there yet. Sweetheart, you are totally there. Your content is amazing. You are ready to scale. Do not paint, <laughs> don't, don't play small here, young lady. Um, this is not, the done for you services. Yeah, this we're literally is doing it service. all. That's the whole yeah. point of this is all this free consulting that normally would be, you know, 10x what this costs to get us all worried, you know, worrying about your business every month, basically. Right. How can we help you? You know? Yeah. Elizabeth says yes, ma'am. Yeah, no, really, <laughs> you 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 want this this help. And 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 of course, once you know how to set this up, I mean I've got a thing I want to evergreen. Um, but I think what I'm gonna focus on in the time we're together is just plain old traffic. Because I know, you know, for every whatever it is, I don't know, two hundred people who join my list, usually one of them's a customer. So you know, even to just grow the list and get some fresh blood in the list seems totally worth it. And then 
once I've got my preview webinar dialed in, then I can do it again for a product. Or once I've got my, you know, if I've got an event coming up, I can do it again for my event. I'm, you know, got my a book launch coming out, like I'm in the middle of right now, I can do it again for a book launch. Once you know how to do it, you can do it for anything. So even if you feel like you're not ready, believe me, first of all, first of all, you all are a terrible judge of your own readiness. You're a terrible judge of your own work and you're a terrible a judge point. of your own readiness. <laughs> I held off even getting the ever webinar ready for Wicker Ports because I wanted this to be right and that to be right. And then once I had it, I had sales on autopilot. You know, the chat was disabled. It still, it still gives us sales like every day. Every day I get sales and I, well, I know where they came from, from Wicked, but I didn't have to do anything. I just woke up and like, we have more revenue coming in. It's the best feeling. And I put off for so long doing it. I don't just dumb. It's just a dumb move by myself. Well, and that's it. I, mean, <laughs> I don't know why I do it. So. You know, you guys make great stuff. And let's face it, there's people who are way dumber than us <laughs> making lots and lots of money at this. Yeah. And you know that you're really in this to help people. And the more people you can reach, the more people you can help. And for you to be able to help them without you actually having to stand there and do it. So to get into an evergreen system where, like Scott says, people are coming in, they're buying, they're into it. It's happening while you're out for a beach walk, while you're building something else cool. Because this is the other problem. My people are all creative. So we're like, oh, yeah, I did that already. Like, I'm bored with that. Right. Yeah. Put it into an evergreen system, let it make yeah. money for you, and then you can go build something new. <laughs> I've seen a lot of stale things make a lot of people money that yeah. we track that I can't reveal. But I'm just like, oh, my God, I've seen that ad and product forever. And they're still drumming up ROI from it. It's just like, blows my mind. Yeah, Elizabeth says, I need this, don't I? Yes, Elizabeth, you do. You should call me and we'll when you come. You're coming to, I'm saving a chair for you. Um, okay. Uh, Juan says, oh, this is interesting. I've heard this objection from people before. Um, I want that, meaning I think sales that happen when we're not actually standing there. But my audience seems to only buy when I'm there live answering their particular questions. What do you think? Um, that's what, so look reports, just to give you some examples, um, this week, this month, so our lifetime value of a customer is about 4,500 bucks and rising each month. So that's nice. But our, um, this month we've had 50 sales and I've talked to three of them. So 50 sales, you know, 45, that's like a couple, $200,000 I made this month. And I talked to three of the people, which I don't mind talking to people. I love people, but you know what? I'm running a company of 15 people. Everyone's got something they need. <laughs> Just one less thing I got to do. You know, I was training up live salesmen so they can do, some people don't want to talk to live demo because, oh, hey, I'm an Australian. and I have a payment pro provider, blah, 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 whatever. They can talk to people, but people that just say, I don't want to talk to anyone. I just want to see what you have and evaluate it. Well, they're buying. And um, so you, you really want, I would do both. We're going to actually be doing both. It's going to be get a recorded webinar right now or click here to book a live demo. And then when they book the live demo, they're going to see the recorded webinar right after anyway, because they probably won't need to talk to anyone. But where ours is software, people like to talk a little more. I don't know what you have one, but you want both because plus overseas people, you know, like our ever webinar closes people in Europe, Australia, wherever. We never even know who they are. It's the best. <laughs> Amazing. It's yeah. So I best. test it one. I, I, I have that. I, I know that feeling, but um, uh, there's also a personal growth aspect here. Like as, as we grow as entrepreneurs and business people, we need to get our sticky fingers off the controls. You know, we need to let what works work and, um, you know, kind of let the kid go on the bicycle without the training wheels. Like I bet your, if your stuff is good enough to sell with you there, it's good enough to sell without you there. Um, Tim asked if it integrates with MailChimp. Yep. We got a drag and drop CSV. We got an API and MailChimp. If you sign up, we'll do the one click integration on that. That's super simple. Very so, nice. Yeah, maybe easy. Where's your sales at MailChimp? Yeah, Tim, right. tell us where your, where your sales are. Uh, Ed says, big data-driven intelligence-based marketing. Thanks for dialing in this reporting tool. <laughs> Is the system set up to integrate our agency clients? Yes. Um, agency and Facebook marketers are, and AdWords marketers and email are the best because they know how to use the data and they've been craving it. And that's where a lot of our growth come from is all like, the, you know, like we get testimonials from Perry Marshall, Ryan Levesque, Kern. Frank Kern was running videos about our product. We didn't even know about it. He didn't tell us. It wasn't like some affiliate back end deal. He's a customer that just runs videos for us. 
So all those guys love it the most because it allows you to justify your fees because the customer calls up your client and agency and they're like, Hey, why am I paying you X, Y, Z a month? And you're like, well, I made you $14,000 on 3000 ad spend. I made you this ROI and I know why. Or if you didn't make it, you can say, Hey, I sent you all this great leads from here and your, your crappy emails. No one's clicking on. You need to redo your funnel. You should go to the evergreen summit. <laughs> Right. <laughs> exactly. The point being, we, we can validate your fees because you can have one click answers for your for your clients that you should have, but you don't. I mean, it's hard so, to prove your worth sometimes. You know, over time, you got to whiz them. You know, wh uh, show them something. Wow, we can give that for you. And I gotta say too, you know, I, I hear from from people sometimes where they're like, "Oh yeah, yeah, I just want to hire somebody else to do this for me. I just want to hire somebody else to do this for me. I don't even want to know about this." And it's a little like trying to outsource your sales before you actually understand how sales works. I think once you actually understand what it is and how to do it and you can do it yourself, then you can outsource it. But until you do, you're not delegating, you're abdicating and it doesn't work. So to spend three days in the room with us and really understand not just how it works in general, like you're not just going to sit there and get a lecture to and take notes, but how it works for you in your business, for your particular deal. And to really be able to see underneath it, like to really see the mechanisms of your business. It's like you get x-ray vision all of a sudden into what you've been doing sort of intuitively um, and, and really understand the hows and the whys. And once you know your business in this kind of way, no one can, no one can ever take it away from you. You know, it's amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, so Juan, I don't know, Juan, if you're going, but we can talk uh, during one of our calls about how to wire that in automated because i went through the same process so yeah. i lived it lived, so lived this the is live good. chat going to every webinar um cry sam another sam hi sam uh says i get brain fog even listening to this i'm too dumb yeah and my product is a class that only seats so many so i don't think i can justify the price of your seminar oh cry sam i beg to differ because first of all you can run this geolocated i mean you can do it just for people who are able to show up live right um, so there's no, so you could fill that class that you're teaching live automatically. I mean, you could have a waiting list right away. Um, and you know, if your class is that successful, you should probably have an automated version of it somehow so that you can help people who aren't able to show up for you in person. Um, and we can talk to you about, about that, about what that might look like. Um, plus when people like something, they want to consume as much of it as they can. Whenever I like something, I like a book, then I'm like, hey, what do they have online? And then I'm like, oh, hey, where can I go to their events? And then, oh, how can I coach? I mean, this one guy, Alan Weiss, I must have drawn, I don't know, way too much money on him. <laughs> but he really helped me as a consultant back when I was. And I loved his stuff. So I just kept spending because it was so fun to learn from him. Yeah. So I, yes. would, I, would, I would argue they would, people would want that. And I've done that with a couple of marketers where I really like their stuff. And, you know, and then I spent a fair amount of money with them because I, willingly wanted to consume more of their whatever they had to say so that might be the case with you i don't, I don't know what you sell but i'm willing to bet yeah you can but, fill a class you have enough that people want to learn from you even if they don't feel like sitting there because you know maybe they can't travel they're afraid of flying <laughs> right or uh, they're goodies, whatever right you get people all over the world so i mean i i mean again just here's here's there's two things that i would do one is because i'm kind of woo, woo like this I would like just put your hand on your belly and imagine your business in front of you and just ask yourself, ask your business what it wants. Ask your business what it wants. You know, how does it want to grow? What is it? What does it need you to be? How does it need you to step forward? Um, and the other thing I would do is just run straight up ROI. Like if you spend, you know, six hundred dollars, it's you know, ten payments. But if you spend six hundred bucks to come to the Evergreen Retreat next week could you make back 600 bucks in the next month? You know, before be. the American, yeah. you know evergreen funnel is going to sell 600 bucks. I mean, yeah. If we can't help even... you do that, then, then we're, we, 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 <laughs> yeah, we, 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 we don't deserve the title of marketer. That's not, yeah. That's not gonna, that's a pretty low barrier. That's why I like that. Pay, the thing about the payment plan. It's like, this is no way we're not going to make back four figures for someone. It's not exactly. Exactly. It's and I get it that it's hard to come up with, you know, six grand, you know, on the spot. So we said, fine, we'll extend the payment plan. We really wanted to make it a no brainer for anybody. Um, so you all have your express cordial invitation uh, to come. You'll be getting emails. Please share this information too. I mean, as you can see, this isn't a big, 
pitch thing. This is huge information. Um, and even, even if you haven't even started your business yet, to, have, to let this sort of wash over you so you really start to understand, like I said, the, the deeper mechanisms of business. Um, it's, it's, it's what separates the, the women from the girls and the men from the boys and the entrepreneurs who struggle and the entrepreneurs who stand on a cliff with their arms up. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like that, you know, one of those like achievement you know, posters. Exactly. On the cliff. <laughs> exactly. Ed says he heard about you from Frank Kern and, and Ryan Dice first. If Kern and Dice use it, then LOL. Uh, yeah. He says, do we need to integrate Google Analytics with Wicked Reports? Uh, no, you, I mean, we, we use it for click counting in some scenarios, but if you already have it on your pages, yeah, we use Google Analytics, but there's no, it's just a one click integration that we ask for, for certain situations. So yeah. many clicks. Uh, Elizabeth says, so this funnel could work for things that have a timeline. For example, I have a retreat in May. Absolutely. Absolutely. We can, um, and Elizabeth works, uh, she has a business called Conscious Conception. She works with, uh, women who are trying to get pregnant or having issues with fertility. Um, and works with an incredible, she's a meditation teacher too. Elizabeth Scott nice. teaches meditation as well. Um, so it's so perfect for you because, you know, that's a very targeted market. Like we can find those people and they're super motivated because they are in pain. Yeah. They need you. So yeah, we can absolutely um, set it up so that we can fill up your event. We've got another buddy, another person who's already coming, who I think is trying to her, fill her event. That's happening like the week after the summit, like it's after the retreat, like we're going to have to get this going fast, but I think yeah. we can do it. And again, she, if she gets two more people into her event, she's paid for the whole, for the entire retreat. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so think about what's the ROI for you? What would you need to do uh, in order to make it worthwhile for you? Tell your friends, you know. Um, friends are good. Friends are good. We like you. We like your people. We like your friends. And, uh, you know, there's pools. There's Legoland. There'll be all kinds of hijinks um because we're like that yeah. uh good do you guys have any more questions before we before we let scott go and i go to my book signing because i because i'm a big expensive fancy you author are. now I'm a, I'm a very big see. deal <laughs> <laughs> i'm a very big deal uh all right great so as soon as uh, zoom you know processes this i'll come back tonight after the reading and and put it up on the on the evergreenretreat.co page the slides will be there the first two trainings are there and um really i just I, i'm surprised that we still have a couple of seats available but i know how you guys are a bunch of last minute lucy's so <laughs> um <laughs> you know get on kayak see how cheap the plane fare is We've got a great deal at the Sheraton Carlsbad. I've got some beautiful menu choices. We can accommodate all dietary restrictions. Yeah, one way to Boston was 120 out. Amazing. I couldn't Amazing. believe it. Yeah, I was looking, you can get from Chicago for less than 200 and from New York for less than three. It was 120. I'm it's a great that. time of year to travel because nobody's going anywhere. And it's a beautiful time of year to come to San Diego for yeah, those. I <laughs> I'm excited. I grew up in Chicago. I remember uh, the event link again. Let me put it in there. Hold on. Um, oops. No, two. Hold on. Everyone, there we go. There it is. Um, yeah, but I would, I would really love to see you all there. Um, we're gonna have a lot of fun and. You know, only assholes make <laughs> promises they can't keep. <laughs> and I don't want to yeah. be an asshole, but uh, again, if we, can't, if we can't make your money back, I would be really, really surprised. This is kind of like what the Infusionsoft Accelerator promises and sometimes delivers, but it's more focused and it's uh, faster and it's cheaper. And it's more intimate. Well, I think it's about the same. I think it's the same time, but it's more intimate and it's $4,000 less. I've worked at a ton of those. Yeah, they're, yeah, me they're too. They're good, but this is uh, cheaper and it's more focused on the traffic. They may have changed it, but the accelerators don't often focus on the traffic aspect. And to us, the traffic aspect is half the game. You got to get good traffic and know which where it's converting or not. And when I used to work with the accelerators, that wasn't always the focus. It may have changed, but right, and they don't have any. Yeah. And they don't have any of these kind of metrics and stuff. So yeah, great. 
All right, everyone. Well, thank you so much for joining. I'm stalling a little bit because I know the minute I say we're done, somebody's going to type in a question and I'm going to be like, oh, <laughs> um, good. let's see. This is really, thank you so much for this. Uh, go get them with the book signing. Yep. You're welcome. Thank you so much for, for being here. Tim says, thanks. Uh, great. Scott, thank That's you great. so much. Thanks for having me, Sam. Look forward to seeing you next week. I'll see you awesome. next week. Take it thanks, easy. Everybody. Bye. Bye.